Hi, Alexis Sobolev, here with you again for the second of seven lessons for beginners. Today I'll show you how to warm up, how to get used to the snowboard and figure out your regular stance. The rest of the videos you can watch via the links in the description. How many trainings do you need to do a simple turn on a bunny hill? From two to four workouts for two hours in my experience is more than enough time, but some people still need a little more. We don't carry the snowboard base away from us because it's just uncomfortable. I think you can guess. Never carry a snowboard on your shoulders because someone can call you. You can abruptly turn and hit someone with the board. The snowboard should never be put on its base because if you put it down, it will slide away. Also, I don't advise sticking a snowboard nose or tail in the snow. If the wind blows, the snowboard will act as a sail and blow down. There are two bad outcomes. The first is that the snowboard can slide away from you in the forest and you might never find it. And the second example is when the snowboard flies into someone at a breaking speed, it could injure them. The snowboard should always be laid down with the bindings facing the snow. That way, it won't go anywhere from you. Which slope should you choose for your first workout? At first, when arriving to the mountain, you don't need to ride the lift to the top right away. But what you do need is to find a bunny hill. You can ask an instructor or at the information desk where you'll be prompted. This is a trail with a slight slope. At the bottom, there's a gentle part. You can see it here. Such a slope will allow us to work out some elements in place. And later, we'll go up the mountain and work the rest at a slow speed. Once you've come to the slope, the first thing we do is warm up. Warm up is the best protection in snowboarding. Most often, snowboarding injuries include hands, wrists, as well as knees and legs. Therefore, we give these body parts the most attention. We start the warm up from the head and gradually go down to the legs. I will now show you the simplest workout you can use before riding. Pull your head to the left, then to the right, pull your head forward, back, look left, look right, next, massage your wrists. Pull four fingers back, then separately massage your thumb, and then you can hold your wrists and make circular movements. Make short rotations with your arms on one and then the other side. Do a full swing with your arms, also in one direction and then the other. Then we can make rotations in different directions. Let's put our feet wide, perpendicular to our shoulders, and rotate left and right, while our shoulders and head also rotate to the sides. Then make circular movements in the lower back, in one direction and then the other. Then we can stretch to the right leg, in the middle, and then to the left leg. We are reaching forward, and then we bend back. You can also stretch the left and right, sit on one leg, press the heel of the right and left legs, and make rolls from one leg to the other. Next, you can try to twist the thigh inward and help with this hand. Stretch your knees, put your feet together, and rock left and right. Then in circular movements, also to the left and right. We put knees shoulder width apart, inward rotation, and outward rotation. With your legs together, sit down at the knees so that we are on our toes. Get up on the toe of one leg knee forward while the other leg is behind you. You can help with your hands to keep you balanced and we will pump the knee to the left, straight and right. Change the leg and do the same. Now how do we fasten bindings correctly? We insert the boot to the mount so that the heel fits snugly inside the back part of the binding. The leg should not dangle. There is no need to start strapping bindings from the lower strap. First we fasten the upper strap, since it provides the main fixation, and then the lower one. There are two types of straps, the first which are fastened to the front of the toe, and the second which fastens to the top. The front straps are made in the shape of the toe on the boot. After you have fastened the bindings, check how well your leg is fixed. If it continues to dangle, you need to tighten the bindings even more. If the leg will dangle, it will have a bad effect on the control of the board. 
Train yourself to strap into your snowboard while standing. If you sit on your ass for too long, any doctor will tell you that it's not good for your health. Now I'll show you how to fasten while standing. At first it'll be very difficult, especially if the snow is very hard, but try to make it a habit and you will start to succeed. Let's put on the snowboard. The free leg can hold the snowboard at the heel edge. Insert the leg and fasten the binding. Next, we need to make a shelf so that you can get up and won't slide forward. This is how we do it. The free leg is in the back and with big digging movements, we dig ourselves a shelf while we move slightly in the direction of the leading leg. The weight we have is on the free leg. I can stand and at the same time make a shelf. The shelf is necessary. Dig perpendicular to the slope. If you dig it a little under the tilt, your board will start to move away. Now I'll show you the basic stance and some exercises in order to feel the snowboard. We look in our direction of movement. Your front arm should be above the snowboard and facing the direction of travel. Your back hand should be slightly bent, hold it in front of you. Our shoulders should be slightly twisted in the direction of travel. Our hips are also set in the direction of the movement. The knees are bent, the weight is evenly distributed in the middle. It's the same very stance if you ride with your left foot forward. Let's do a couple of exercises to get a better feel for the snowboard. Bend your knees and press on the toe. We do the same and press on the heel edge. This should not be done abruptly, just to feel the snowboard. Further bend your knees, look in front of you and shift the weight first to the right leg, return to the middle and then to the left. To get access to all the video lessons of our school and increase your skill at any time, follow the link in the description of this video. Now we will talk about exercises to feel the snowboard, and they will also help you get up and down the lift. Strap on the lead leg with your free foot. Step forward and at the same time press on the toes. Press on the front edge, and then next, step back with our free foot while pressing on the heels on the heel edge. We put our free foot behind the heel edge and raise the snowboard in front of you. You can first raise your nose and then pull your tail. We put our free leg behind the toe edge and do the same. Then put our supporting leg by the heel edge and turn the supporting leg 90 degrees. Raise the snowboard and rearrange it by 90 degrees. We'll then make four turns in one direction to get it 360 degrees. Then we do the same in the other direction. Use your supporting leg to put it on the toe edge, turn it 90 degrees, raise the snowboard and substitute it. We also make four turns, 90 degrees one direction and then the other direction. The next exercise is called skating. When we do this exercise, our weight is clearly above the front leg, which is fastened. Techniques are exactly the same as on a skateboard and as we push with one foot, sometimes it's even in the air for some time. And the second fastened leg is our support. We have weight above it. With this exercise, we can move on a flat surface, and this exercise will also help us get on a lift. When we walk straight, it is simpler to keep our free leg behind the back edge so that it's easier to guide the snowboard so that it moves in a straight trajectory. When we put our free foot in front and try to go straight, there may be problems with the trajectory. The snowboard may slide off to the side. This exercise must be done on a flat surface because if there is even a slight slope near the mountain, you will start to slide and fly down the hill. In our next exercise, we'll put our free foot behind the heel edge, then push several times and put our free leg next to the rear binding on the snowboard when you put your foot on the board. We distribute the weight in the middle between the legs. Next, we do the figure eight exercise. You must choose the trajectory of the movement in the form of a figure eight and change the position of the free leg. First, we hold it by the heel edge and then by the front. If we are driving the right foot forward and turn to the right, then it's easier for us to hold free the leg behind the back binding. If we ride with our right foot forward and turn to the left, then it's easier for us to keep our free leg next to the front binding. This exercise will help us get off comfortably from the lift because the descent happens both to the left and to the right. And sometimes you need to set the trajectory yourself. 
There are two main mistakes people make when riding with one fastened leg. They bend at the lower back. We must always keep our legs stance as we rehearsed on the spot. It is also wrong to transfer your weight to the leg you are pushing with. Otherwise, you will not be able to keep your balance. The snowboard will constantly run ahead of you. To do the following exercise, we need a little speed. It will require you to learn to climb uphill with your foot fastened. We put our free leg behind the toe edge. Bend the knee of the fastened leg so that our snowboard fits into the toe edge and locks it in place. If you straighten the knee of the fastened leg, then your snowboard will slip away from you. You want the edge to lock into the snow. It is important to place your snowboard perpendicular to the slope. If you put it slightly tilted, it will begin to leave from under you. Then step free with your foot. Lift the snowboard and pull it behind you. Then we'll climb a few meters up the hill. You need a little speed. Get on the snowboard, keep the weight in the middle, drive and stop naturally. You also need to do these exercises on the side of the mountain. And don't climb into the middle of the route because there are other riders riding at high speeds. We put our free leg next to the rear binding and stand in the main position. We evenly distribute the weight between the right and the left legs, and we go straight to a complete stop. Next exercise, we're going straight, and at the same time, we're gonna squat at the knees. For a start, you can try to do it on the spot, and then in motion. Here's the next exercise. We'll ride in the same way with one foot fastened, and we transfer the weight to the leading leg, and then we return it to the middle, again to the leading leg, and then to the middle. Next, we need to make a turn with one foot fastened and slow down. This will help us get off the lift comfortably and safely. If we ride with our front foot forward, we need to shift the body weight to the leading foot towards the back edge. Then the board will gradually begin to turn. When it begins to undo us from this position, we press harder on the heels. And with our free foot, we can break on the snow from the side heel edge. To turn left, we need to shift the body weight towards the leading foot, towards the toe edge. Gradually, we will start to unfold. Press down on your toes and apply pressure to the toe edge. With your free foot, you can also break on the snow from the toe's edge. Then we stop. If this was helpful, get access to the rest of the videos by following the link in the description. In our collection, there are more videos on basic turns, carving, as well as freestyle. In this lesson, you should have figured out how to do a warm up what exercises we need for our muscles to get used to snowboarding, and to help you get on and off the lift. See all six beginner tutorials here in the video description. In the next video, I will tell you how to properly fall and what safety standards there are on the slope. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and don't sleep on the following lessons.